This week on Revenue Uncoded, we explore different venues within the telco domain where we expand beyond BSS, beyond OSS, beyond CRM, and we start talking about digital geolocation smart band technology. We've brought in Gary Rishik from Nurby Technologies, and he'll be providing insights on different uses and applications of information that can be used within smart pen technology and how it can help an operator increase revenue, increase ARPU, reduce churn, et cetera, et cetera. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome on a Friday to Revenue Uncoded. Uncoded, uncoded, uncoded. It's another episode. Brian, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Bill. It's been a while. It has been between your vacation and my vacation. And work demands that take us into different places. Yeah. We've got a guest here today. Yes, we do. I know this man, Mr. Gary Reshick. Thanks, guys. Yeah, man. Uh, Gary and I have known each other for well, ten, about 10 years ago, yeah, at least. right? And, um, and we worked together on several projects more in the real-time OCS world um, and, and mediation extension, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and he's been involved with a lot of different things. Give, a, give us a, a quick thumbnail on you, brother. I uh, uh, grew up technically at Sprint, actually probably in the early 2000s. I went to the vendor side in 2008. Spent a lot of years doing, you know, kind of in the IP core, you know, basically... Uh, data plane stuff around DPI, um, control plane around, you know, policy and charging is kind of where I met you, right? So, mm -hmm. Yep. And then I moved to Nervi and I'm doing kind of field operations and location intelligence. So Very cool, man. Uh, Well-rounded individual is what I would say about Gary. He's been, he's got a, uh, some solution architecture elements. He's got, he's been in sales. He's been in engineering. He's been in operations. Um, very diverse background to say the least. So it's, it's a pleasure to have you on Revenue Encoded. It's been a while, Gary. It's been a while. So it's good to see you. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yep. So, so what we were thinking about today is is that we're gonna, um, you know, obviously we we talk about you know BSS, OSS, CRM, uh, but really we want to kind of focus on the telecom elements today. T today's show is going to be a little more telecom centric, and what I've, I've really kind of found fascinating is that. You know, as as we've talked on this show about orchestration across all of the elements, BR, you know, CRM, BSS, OSS, and the importance they're in, but what the network elements and the con, uh, elements within the network and the extended components of that IT stack that uh, encompass things like workforce management or, you know, kind of field management. So what we want to kind of do is just talk about additional data feeds okay. that, that provide business intelligence and help an operator run a better business and drive either incremental business revenue or save money, uh, that sort of thing. Does that sound like a good start? And which, pieces, and which pieces of that data are consumed by which business units? So you've got you've got people that are working in the field that need information. You've got analytics side of this. You've got operational efficiency, all sorts of different players that want to see the most accurate and up-to-date data that they can possibly get. So as we've been exploring through the last few sessions of this, uh, one thing keeps coming up that those networks king, data's king, pipes king, mm -hmm. your knowledge the, to be competitive in your market space, you've, you've got to be on top of, of your game. You need that information. You need it readily. So um, what do you think about just kind of an overview of how data is presented to a business from from what you're experiencing now? Uh, that's a great question. It's interesting for me because I've been in Nerby, I guess, two years now. In the beginning, I always had my focus on, you know, how do we enable the tools to the, the field, right? The guys out in the last mile. And what we really kind of turned the corner for me personally, I think the company as well, was really once we started to pull a lot of data in, started doing analytics and starting to really understand the efficiencies or proficiencies of the field operations, once you start to do preventative maintenance and you can proactively get in front of those problems and actually understand where you can make efficiencies, I mean, your churn goes down, your revenue goes up, and that's what operators are focused on, right? So we really do a ton of reporting and analytics on those efficiencies in the field. And so so in order to do the uh, analytics in and of themselves, requires the data to do that. We do a ton of data collection. Obviously, you have to have people input data, but we have the tool, like we have native apps, right? iOS and Android. 
the field operations teams, they have checklists for automobiles or the auto inspection stuff. They've got assets in the field. They've got historical data. You know, obviously there's network monitoring systems that are providing input on the status of the nodes out in the field. So we have a lot of different um, sources of data that make this a very powerful, basically, view of the whole data set. Right. And, and what we want to kind of focus on is, is that that data, right, is, you know, what are operators really looking for? Right. What, yeah. what are the what are the problems that this next generation of tools that are out there, you know, whether it's smart pins or geolocation or whatever, I don't care. You know, how do they complement the those, those network elements? And you know, what are the specific things that you're looking at? You've already kind of provided a couple of examples, right? right? Is I want to get to better predictive churn. I want to uh, be able to kind of see where problems are at, or maybe kind of anticipate where problems are at, or be able to react to network elements being down. And, and, and so there's that side. And it seems like the other side is, you know, once they're there, right. And they're spitting data off of all these elements, how are they really leveraging that to make more money or save more money? It's, it's a simple proactive versus reactive. That's I think it's probably. So there's a lot of people think about the network is we kind of talk about the network, but it's also the guys in the field doing the work. That's really the key that I should probably focus on a bit too, is really the, the performance of the field operations teams and where can they make improvements to actually provide a better network, more stability, better performance on the network for the customers. Those things make a difference. Right? Yeah. So. And when I think of, when I think of field operations and I think of network deployment and rolling a truck, right? I always think about, oh my God, this, the cost, right? the cost per truck roll That's of exactly all of these right. guys is a big, big, huge element, right? So, so Reduce if, if we're able to kind of consume data, if we're able to consume data in different ways, right? And proactively, then we, then we reduce those elements of truck roll and some of the other facets you were just talking. Well, and it's also probably, um, true that it's cheaper to prevent churn than it is to implement a win back program to try and recover people that have left due to a bad experience, for example. So if you're if you're able to be proactive, I think again, then you're you're going to improve that ratio of customer saves before they have to go to a win back, which is even more expensive because now you're going to have to give discounts and a fuzzy bear or whatever uh, to get them to come back on. <laughs> and you know you, you know so that's that's a lot more expensive to do that. And when you have a better customer experience. Word of mouth plays as well. Cause yeah, it's a brand building, right? You get credibility with your customers for being stable. And yeah, exactly. I agree with you. So if you walked me through a, just an example of an efficient, proactive uh, scenario that that involved the, the uh, proactive analytics, sending a truck, and fixing something, what would that kind of look like? We'd Looking for kind of a walkthrough of a use case? Yeah, just kind of a use case of, of how would how would I do this proactively if I was looking at, at a process of how I do it today for rolling trucks, if, it, if this was my shop, versus how can I be more efficient at it? What, what would those steps look like uh, to get that truck out there, to get the, the proactive uh, activities taking place to keep the network coming and, or replacing bad equipment? Or what have you, being proactive. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the ver first thing we do, and it's not every customer, it depends on the customer, right? But the one thing we've done a lot in the last year that gets is pretty exciting is we take a lot of, ingest a lot of data from network monitoring systems, like I said. And once you can really uh, visibly see the network and the performance, like you have, let's say, a tier of over 90%, like let's say there's certain nodes that are performing at a high performance, you'll obviously have a high tier, it's a green, you know, smart pin. Um, as they start to degrade, you add capacity, there's an issue, it starts to degrade. Maybe it has a red status, you change state, then it gets a trigger of notification back into the OSS that says, hey, there's something happened in the field, right? That's a little bit reactive, but what we do is we try to get the data and proactively see the trend and see the correlate that, maybe that situation to other situations in the same area. Is that problem actually helping upstream at the optical node? Is it happening further upstream past that? So you can fix the bigger problem versus chasing individual problems, right? right? You get efficiencies doing that. So man, you just mentioned, all right, and, and we're going to bounce around a lot of different places. Just bear with us. <laughs> so, so we've kind of talked about the core elements of the telecom stack, you know, the CRM, the OSS, the BSS, you know, what, what you're kind of talking about is that network marriage that really probably is a little more OSS centric, right? But what we we're talking about before is that you're also kind of integrating with the CRM side, 
I'm curious about the CRM side. What what kind of what what are you seeing in the industry in the space? It's actually a great question. It's an emerging question, which I'd like to put that back on you because you guys are obviously billing, and billing has a big tight you know fit to customer care, right? But we have customers now because obviously as a VP of platforms around engineering, I get a lot of integration requests. The one I've seen a few times lately is how do I get into the uh, the CRM, right? I want to know the ticketing, who's getting the tickets. Um, and so that's that's really interesting. So, and, and so you're talking about from the from the field force perspective. They the, exactly. The OFIA, right? Exactly. The guys that are out there installing it, putting the cables. The guys on the trucks, on getting, the ground, yeah. You know, yelled at by the customer and that's this, right. that, the other. So that's what you're talking about is that you're seeing more and more requests for better integration of that data and the guys that are actually in the field, they want access to that. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's actually kind of the opposite. I don't think the CRM systems have great visibility into what's going on in the field. That's what we focus on, right? So there's the gap. So and so right now that that data is not pushed back to the CRM. You're kind of they're they're, they're you still got a little a little problem with siloization of those uh, those platforms as opposed to full integration, right? Yeah, yeah. And bridge that gap. Well, let's let's explore this. What we're just talking. I like, I kind of like this, which one. is which is that next thing, which is you've got a a silo of information out on the data right. on the edge. The CRM is is the edge on the customer side into your BSS slash a little OSS uh, integration point. But right now you don't see that full left to right, right to left uh, spectrum of data flow. There's a ton of assets in neighborhoods that aren't tied to an address. Yeah. And those things are things we manage, we track, we understand the history, we understand the condition or the state of what they're in. And those all affect the customers that are actually in those neighborhoods, right? And that's what you guys as a billion vendor probably would look at, right? So... That's so how I connect the dots to my head, you know, very core kind of customer focus, we're much field, you know, last mile focused. Well, and once again, that's 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 a newer, more involved integration layer that you haven't typically seen over the years. So there have been isolated smaller versions where somebody has a, 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 a tighter knit community where they're able to, to integrate left to right, right to left across both sides of the spectrum, customer side to your infrastructure side, vice versa. So when you get to a larger network deployment or a, a, a telecommunications provider where you could have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of assets in the field that, like you just said, aren't even necessarily tied to an address specifically. Exactly. So when, you're, when you've when you got Aunt Frida calling in with a complaint about something, <laughs> Aunt Frida always calls in. God, she's with Frida. Come yeah. on, Nini. So she calls in to complain about that. That ability to look at everything that is uh, part of that asset structure for Aunt Frida in her neighborhood, yeah. and everything that's providing that, you get a quick picture of, hey, we're we're pretty green on everything, or look at this, we've got a number of a couple different elements here, and it turns out, you know, uh, a couple of places are flooded because the river, yeah. you know, went up, and you know, and you all kind, whatever, whatever the case may be. Exactly, and think of the visualization aspect of what we do, right? It's on a map. Frida's backyard might have a smart pin for her home, right? But if you can actually see a cluster of trends going on in a neighborhood or a part of a city, you can start to really drill into the bigger problem, like I mentioned before. We talk a lot about existing assets and things that are already built out and working. Another thing we do a lot, is, actually, it's really starting to emerge too, just to kind of you know tie this together, is a lot of people are putting a lot of time and money um, around building out fiber, right? You know, mm -hmm. And obviously, if you're going to do field operations, why not build out the fiber lines, track the assets, where they're going to go? do the kind of construction management kind of stuff up front. There's a construction piece to all the stuff we're talking yeah. about on the maintenance side too, right? So it's pretty interesting how that stuff is. Absolutely right. makes sense on that. There's a ton of investment on fiber and a ton of. It, it, it is a massive um, trend, right? Now. It is. You know, fiber fiber build outs are everywhere. Yeah, if, I've had a lot of conversations re recently about the construction piece. That's really starting to emerge too. Well, and that, that also, you have a lot of also government funding money in them for the fiber build outs. On the rural side, sure. on, the, on, on the rural side, the United States, that's there, what is it, $42 billion that was that was, you know, enacted to help provide better you know, communications infrastructure be across the middle of nowhere. It could be milking your cow, but have, have a great, have you know, a great Super Bowl feed right there. Might get fiber to your house, Bill. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, that would be really <laughs> awesome. I don't see that happening for years, but that'd be cool. I mean, I'm, so I'm I'm still kind of intrigued by one of the things you said, right? Is that do the guys out in the field they really want to have better visibility into the into the customer information, 
while while they're out there? Is that and, or is that just some or is that really in in your role as kind of in the engineering and operations role? Is that just really what's happening from the customer side? Is that well, I want to take my CRM data and I want to marry it with my my field workforce data much stronger. I want to have better visibility into the interaction. Yeah, they, I mean, honestly, it, if you open a smart pen, you can look. It's it's a containerized piece of digital information, right? You can have digital forms they can go through and cascade. Hey, I answer this question. What's the next question based on that? But fundamentally, um, God, I didn't have to edit this piece. I lost my train of thought. That's all right. You just go right ahead. No worry. I, I totally forgot what I was going to say about. He just did a cash cow. Like, this cash cow. Yeah, cash. Oh, by the way, if you cost, if you cost, it costs ten dollars. I do. If you cuss, if you cuss, it costs ten dollars. <laughs> God, I bring my wallet, fellas. Uh, um, well, you won't get out of the building without. Uh, so, what's the question? I totally was. We were talking about the integration between you know different systems like CRMs or billings that that the field force may be looking for. And my question is: is in your role as engineering guy, right, right, right. You know, you're being asked to kind of drive more API yeah, sharing of yeah, information, yeah, more yeah. integration. You know, what what are they what are they asking for? What and why? Let me ask a question. Before we go down that, for our listeners and people, if you, you're you talking about containerized sets of information, a pin, describe that in detail, what that is for people that aren't familiar with. I have no that. idea what containerized means. What is it? It's, it's, it's a encapsulation of information at a location, right? So, I mean, you're taking a location a lot long, and you basically put a pin on the map is not innovative. It's right when you basically can actually containerize information, put a digital form inside of that. It could be a digital form could be... A, and a checklist, it could be an inventory kind of thing, it could be a historical thing, um, it could be who was here last, it could also, I mean, we also do a lot of real-time things, you know, around the network performance like I talked about, but we also have the historical network performance. So if I go out to service a node, I say, well, God, this thing's been around at a high, you know, performance for months, then the last seven days, I can see the trend and pull up the app, see the location, see the asset. Mm -hmm. I can kind of go through my mind and say, okay, what well, happened the last seven days? Look at the cluster in the neighborhood and go, well, it's not just this area, but this one over here is having similar problems. You kind of can tie a lot of moving parts together by just visually seeing what's going on in this area. It's like a heat map with geopositioning in it, and you can see the different, uh, all the information that was captured when you put a pin in for a, for a particular uh, encapsulation of data, whatever that is, a house a node, what have you, whatever it is. And then when you look at those from the analytics or the reporting perspective of it, and they they have real-time statuses to them and where they are, where they sit, all of a sudden you start to get that that heat map of, hey, everything's green or I got some yellow right in here. Or this is this whole area went red because somebody just knocked down the pole with all the fiber on it. Exactly. There's a work history function too, right? It's yeah. not, it's like what I was here last week. What well, changed the last week? Well, I was here last week, but Bob came in three days ago. I have the history. That's yeah. A big piece of this. And what they did and they feel like they have changed this out. We did that. So they don't have to go and do the same thing again. Yeah. You know, we, we put in a repeater here. We did this. We, we found that the, we had to trench a new cable in here because the other one, yeah. you know, yeah. Aunt Frida was out with her hoe doing the rose garden and whacked it. <laughs> Aunt Frida is always a problem. But that's garden season. Yeah. Can't blame the lady. <laughs> All right. So um, can I go back to my question? No. Uh, it's, it's not as good um, as yours. But but what are they looking for? I mean, what what what, what are you being asked to, the to provide? The supervisors, the executives, the big cable companies obviously are focused on what? How do I reduce my churn? How do I drive my ARPU? And how do I get more customers? And, you know, how do I get more market share? So to do that, what are you going to do, right? You've got to have really a highly performant network. We're not a network, right? We're basically on the edge. But if your teams out on the edge are highly efficient at what they do and they can reduce truck rolls and they can actually, you know, I go out to fix one problem, to your point, look at a heat map and go, okay, I see a trend, it's upstream. I go fix it upstream. I might fix 10 or 20 houses. How am I affecting churn, right? I mean, there's, there's a, it's not a direct correlation, but there's definitely value there. So that's really kind of the, the value problem. That's, it's really efficiencies. I, our customers are so incredibly focused on how do I get my field operations teams to be more efficient and really take care of the customer. Good call. I'll go with this. You still, you still, that's not one of those things that's going to be replaced anytime soon by artificial intelligence. 
There's not going to be there's not going to be an AI component that just just swizzle it all together and makes it magic. There's still assets that are physical that somebody it takes a Mark One hand and eyeball to kind of fix some of those things at times, especially with Amfreda. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. I love it. Um, all right, so all right, so so you know, I kind of you're not a network element, right? But you kind of make the network better. Right, you provide better visibility into yes, the elements and what's going on and the degradation here and whatever. Yeah, but we're, really, we're tracking the field team. It's really a lot of the guys on the. It's as much. It's not as much. Uh, it's partially the 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 network and the infrastructure and the performance, like we keep hitting on. But it's a lot of it's the people in the field and how they're performing. Hmm. Right, Th- those two pieces together are really kind of the value. What do you mean by them? How the they're performing. Are, are you being like... Uh, well, do they have to go back to the same site three or four times in a week, right? Does a different guy have to come in? Does the guy leave and does the, the system degrade because he basically, and Frida basically, I don't know, right? There's so many variables, but yeah, yeah. point. Or, you know, did, based on, uh, I'm sure you would track any sort of metrics as to what the resolution strategy was for anything yeah. where a truck went here, it turns out it was this thing. If you have to go back a week later and redo the same thing again... Yeah. Well, do you, do you need to have some more training on this? Was that an improper installation? All those different items that come into play to to help drive that efficiency over time. I'll take it one step farther. As I understand it, some of our customers, the guys in the field, their bonuses, their incentives are based on basically metrics that we report on. Oh, really? Do you have any Do you have any, exep- do you have any examples of those metrics? No, I don't do that. I don't go out. That's not your dream. I do analytics for Mm -hmm. customers. Yeah, I I know for a fact that they are definitely incentivized with real money on how they perform. They're tracking them through the mobile app, what data they put in and how much, you know. Mm -hmm. Their efficiency. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And properly filling out your form versus not filling in the data. Yeah, we have required attributes and features like that. So you pretty much can't Can't print one without completing it. You can't fix your order up until you... You can put the word Frida, I guess. And yeah, Frida. It may not say anything, but it, <laughs> but you got to say something. That's a digital key for everything. Yeah, it's, yeah. It yeah, it's just just another extension of, ne- of orchestration that we've yeah. been talking about across the whole stack. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and network it remains king, all that kind of stuff. So, um, let me let me kind of shift gears a little bit here for you. All right, so... So what you're seeing, um, you know, you're providing greater level of visibility and greater level of automation, and the container thing is really fascinating. That's got you know forms or whatever that just facilitate the job, the implementation, whatever. So, so are these operators? What is their state of um, readiness for this? Right? I mean, is is it? I mean. You know, are are most of these operators nowhere close to having that level of automation, or they're kind of halfway there? Is it kind of is it newer stuff, or that we're really kind of talking about? That's a really good question. I mean, my view is is they have a lot of tools, but they're very disjointed. And so, what Nerby does is we pull data from a lot of places, and we kind of tie a lot of the tools they have together to make it more of an end to end view of what's really going on at the edge, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is there a demand for it? I guess is one of your questions. I mean, honestly, we, our demand is so high right now. It's just, it's, it's almost ridiculous how much, uh, response we're getting. I mean, it's, which is a good problem to have, right? So it is a good problem. Yeah. And you haven't even bridged that next level, which is that further integration across the, the business model to CRM to show which, what are that, which part of that data, you know, you kind of, kind of brought up before that you're. We're still kind of in a siloed mode a little bit as far as the edge data to the to the customer and the CRM side of that data, and then that marriage to the OSS and the truck rule side and the it's it I my two cents of opinion on that is that's certainly going to be a place that expands that integration uh, probably at a pretty quick pace because it seems like it would make a lot of sense. Think about the reconciliation piece. You guys understand if a customer is buying more services or they're turning. We have all this visibility in what's going on in the field, but we don't know if the guy is actually going to buy more service or actually go away. Imagine once you can kind of reconcile what we do with what you guys know. That's that's pretty powerful. Yeah. That is operators will really start to understand what's going on in their network and how they can do things better and drive more business. And you know, you kind of use the word network edge, right? So I it's historically, I thought I smile, yeah. Well, well, I mean, yeah, because historically, you know, you have two dynamics, right? You got the mobile network, and then you have the fiber, or yeah. just the cable network, or whatever you want to call it. But it's basically the same, right? Either way, you're dealing with network edge information and really trying to figure out how to kind of do it. You know, in the mobile world, it tends to be a little more real time, right? You know, and on our side, it's getting closer and closer 
to real time, wouldn't you? Would you agree or disagree as someone who's everything both sides? Real time, honestly. I mean, really? yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, you got to figure you're talking to the live network. It's our, it's our front ends talking to our, our core, right? It's also the software is a service base. So the guys in the field are putting the data in, it comes right into the core. I mean, the guys back in the data centers, they're sitting on a, a laptop or whatever they're looking at. They have, they have a portal. So as their guys, they feel they're doing things, notifications are popping up on the portal. So the guys back in the office are actually seeing the supervisors are seeing in real time what's going on. Hmm. So it's all real time. And just a quick logistical sidebar is, are, are these guys using tablets or are they just using their mobile phones as they're doing all this stuff? Uh, bag phone. It's bag phone. Bag phone. <laughs> that's how old we are. Yes. That's funny. Um, um, they actually, we have customers that literally have tablets. We have ones, the iOS and Android are very popular. I mean, whatever device they want, we support them all. I mean, I think it's largely Android and iOS. There are guys that carry tablets. There's some guys that probably put on a hotspot and use a portal in their truck on a laptop and it's their choice. We support them all. So now if I'm, what I'm hearing, right, is that if the appetite and the demand for, uh, this technology and this innovation with workforce management and field operations. You know, if you're busy, right, then that means to me then it's on the early stages, right? So, so let me let me ask you to put on your thinking cap here, right? So, so now is this evolution of technology becomes uh, more common, right? And so now you know, it's a couple three years from now, and or it's right now you're you're deploying it. A couple three years from now, four years, from now, where do you, any any get any feel for what is the next generation? Of this? Uh, I think it's the construction piece. There's so much fo fo uh, focus on the fiber construction. And honestly, we get a lot of requests. How do we basically, as we layer fiber, get those assets onto the map? So as we kind of set up you know, customers and start to do what we do already, those assets are already there. So when you say construction, just we are building out a network. I'm at the moment, oh. cable companies doing fiber construction, really dropping cable in the ground, all the assets that come around to make fiber work. So how does it, so how does that next generation of technology are you to want to include things like permitting, timing, exactly uh, all the other well, the legal piece of that, so that you've you've got permission to put that down, pull rights, whatever. Yeah, a lot of our customers, honestly, Brian, have a ton of uh, media files inside of our uh, smart pens. They put pictures in there, they put recordings in there. So, so you got everything. Oh, yeah, it's all contained. It's all container section we talked about before, Brian. Okay, thank, thanks, Ben. Yeah. Appreciate, it. <laughs> appreciate, it. Frida, uh, but. But yeah, so I, I mean that that information. So I, as you say, that the multi, call it the multimedia digital pen. When you pull that, when you open the suitcase up there, you could have everything from the permits, the timing, to the uh, the surveys, the lines, everything. The network status in real time. What's going on with the notes? You know, the neighborhood, everything. I mean, I'll throw a curveball, you guys. I mean, just to get away from cable for a minute, we also have a satellite customer in another country and they basically are trying to figure out where to put internet from sunlight into different parts of that country where there's no internet because there's no competition, right? So they call it site surveys and they're literally going out and they're dropping pens in areas going, okay, we want guys to come out. These guys come out, they have a form, it's a site survey. They fill out the form and they go back and they say, okay, based on these site surveys and these areas on the map, we have basically customers, they go do a second survey. We think there's a value to put internet here. They go to households, the households say yes or no. They're dropping satellites all all over the place in these countries because of basically a location about where to provide a service. You know, pretty cool. Um, yeah, and, and I've I've actually had conversations with um, with a with a with a company that you know, there, there's the big boys, um, Elon, that has the you know satellites everywhere, and then there's other alternatives out there, and and they go to some of these geographically remote locations where. Uh, they're looking for that exact thing, and what they provide is that satellite service, yeah, um, as an extension either to the carriers or as an independent uh, option. Is the only only option in some right. instances, exactly. And and some of the times they're they're like they're like mining locations in the middle of nowhere. You need good communications infrastructure. So so I I can see where that would kind of complement that pretty pretty logically, right? Yeah. And then so and so I'm going to go back to that construction thing. So I want to summarize it. So next generation, right, is that if you're, you're always building the network, you're always trying to drive it, but with the next generation of what you're seeing is that you're, you're going to aggregate ancillary sources of data, w whether it be permits or whether it be you know, right of access or whatever it is, to facilitate a faster, lower cost build out of the network. 
That's the bottom line. Yeah, that's that's fair. And, and know that you have everything you need that are required on site, so that if the if the local code inspector would show up, for example, do you have everything marked off? You digitally, you've got each one of these set up. If that's an option for you in that particular locality, uh, then you've got your surveys, site equipment, scheduling, timing. Uh, then you jump into resources. You know how. How many rolls of fiber do you need to have at this location? How far is it going to go? Yeah, I mean, a lot. Fundamentally, Brian, a lot of it's just enforcing a, a process in a digital fashion at a location. Yeah, I mean, that's really what it is. And but, it, it seems to make a lot of sense. And then, then you know, there's a lot of times when you had somebody that comes up and has the aluminum fold-up thing and the piece of paper, and then the wind hits it. <laughs> Gets stuck in Frida's bush. She yells at you over there in the in her. No, it's yeah. going to be two weeks before yeah. I can get back out and see. So that's a, that's you know that's that that's that data again. That's that that information at your fingertip. That's the the real time information when you need it as quick as you can get it and everything that you need. And if you don't have it, what was it that we need to fill in? And, you know, answer those. Questions. It's all part of the containers, Brian. It's all it's all in the containers. It's all containerization. Containers. As far as encapsulation, that <laughs> kind of throw a curveball. It's the same thing. Be lovely, just to kind of get. I'm the lowest common denominator, so I try to provide. The encapsulation of this bill is quite intense. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. You, you kind of talked about the demand, and it's obviously there, right? And, um, you know, where do you, you? We talked about construction and you know, facilitate that as next generation. What other big issues or pains? Are you seeing from carriers as you guys deploy this technology? Uh, I'll, I'll I'll speak to like Latin America because that seems to be a big area of growth for the what we're doing right now, right? And obviously, you know this Latin America being a billion vendor. I don't think every house in Latin America has a billing address, does it? No, it does not. Exactly. We are right. very we are intimately familiar with that. Where it says where it says in the customer record the blue house at the corner. Seriously. I mean, because they, they don't necessarily have a physical address. Exactly. So imagine a world where you can go in and put pins on the map of your customers, which we've talked about, but also the customers you don't have. So you can almost have a, you know, blues my customer, reds a target, homes pass type of thing. Now you're getting a market view of what your real opportunity is as a carrier. Good point. I mean, and then you can almost heat map that. Why do I not have customers in these areas? Because I don't have coverage, which is not a mobile thing. It's more of a cable thing for the, in this case, but... How do I get more business and how do I invest my build out of my network based on the asset? So, so let me ask you a hypothetical, silly question. So if I'm, I'm a cable operator and I'm putting that homes past, right. And, and I'm, I'm the guy that's putting smart pins out in, you know, a, a 10 block radius, you know, on a, on a day. And can you put in smart pins that say not a customer right here? Oh yeah, Absolutely. And kind of what I'm trying to say. And all right, so there we go. So you're taking that not a customer, right? And now you're kind of theoretically feeding that back to the marketing and sales people with good integration. Yeah. What, what, why do we not in these areas? Do we not have the network there? Do we not have the uh, field operations team to support? We had too much churn. We just didn't succeed there. There's so many variables. You know that, right? But the point of it is you can get a view of your market and understand the total landscape where the money can be made and you can actually start to digitize some process and understand what's going on to your point all this data stuff i mean that's a pretty powerful place to be it's a huge place mm -hmm. yeah like hey we're, we're we're going by a home pass you sort of drop a smart pin this place is a mansion look at that look at the size of this house there's some huge money there so yeah that's the type of thing you can put yeah, that that there's a lot of conversation around those types of things is how do we get more market share by basically utilizing the tool and historically, when I think about the cable space and I think about operators at the local landline level, you know, it, you know, it, it really just kind of rolls up to a home's pass and a percentage therein, right? That's the metric of success. And if you hit, you know, X percent, then you're there, right? And, and, and maybe the, the marketing and the products and all the sales geeks can, can kind of take a better information with better visibility and kind of provide more tailored more focused, individualized messages to that individual opportunity, right? Cool. I would definitely agree with that. But it all goes back to data. And network is, data is, right? you can you yeah. have enough data. All right, quick sidebar. Do you know what the gazinias and the gazaches are? I don't understand what you're saying. All right, well, exactly. <laughs> well, working with this man for 20 years, 
I sat there and when I was first started a company, uh, we sort of started working together. I'm like, I, man, I, I'm trying to figure out what it is that we really do with this, you know, applied intelligence, radiation, and usage analytics. And he goes, Bill, he goes, it's very simple, all right? This is data, right? It's either in or it's out. It's gazinhas and it's gazachas. And just think of it simply as that, and you just look at it as just going in and out and going out. Steve Sinians. The gazachas. The gazinhas and the gazachas. You got to capture it, then you got to report on it. And you need a BVAX 9000 to kind of report on that, which is another inside joke. But All right, man. but yeah, so the so those forms, those those that digital capture of information tied with that location information of your smartphone, your tablet, or what have you, you're capturing that geospatial, putting that pin in, and then filling in the at a minimum the required elements for a particular pin location. Even if you were just doing like. A neighborhood survey, like you were talking about, Latin America. And a pen's not static, too, by the way. I mean, you could have a pen, you can fill out a form, and the form can actually state, you can say, hey, this was a form for a new home or a new, you know, uh, new customer. Planned. It can change state, and now this is an existing customer. Then all of a sudden, it's, you know, the, the, something has happened. There's been a few service events. Maybe there's an outage. We're waiting for somebody to come and fix a problem. The, the pens can change states constantly, what the form is or what the, what you're trying to do inside yeah. of that form or inside that pen, right? So. Do you have to take the action that you just described, you know, by the pen placer, or you can you, you can do that remotely about the pen? Um, it can be done a lot of different ways. I mean, we, we get inputs from um, network um, systems that say, okay. So like a CSR could be sitting there looking at pin information, right? And, and trying to, they just got a bad call about X, Y, Z. They can, can they change not, the not, status yeah. of the pitch? We have not had a CSR yet access that I know of, but again, I don't, I'm not customer facing as much as some of the team, but to my knowledge, we haven't done that yet, but I think that's where it's going. I'm getting integration requests to systems that basically would do that, I believe. So. Rebel ticketing system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think it's coming. And it seems like it would make total sense for being able to leverage that information, uh, once again, proactively servicing your customers, offering something up before they've had a really bad experience. When you're, when you're coming at it from the CSR side and maintaining that uh, customer experience and relationship, the more information you have, the more offers you have, the more ways you can, uh, you know, put your best foot forward back with those customers. I mean, uh, that, that cost of customer acquisition and retention uh, mm -hmm. is, you want to stay on top of that because it's cheaper to keep them than it is to keep, to try and bring them back. That's right. That's right. Cool beans. What else, Brian? What else has got your mind shared this afternoon? Well, I like Aside that. from getting a haircut, very, you know, long, I, I'm, you're, I'm after this. you're a hippie. Here, hit you know, brother. Hey, I don't don't oppress me. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, he doesn't have that challenge yeah, with the. I, with I the... cut my hair this morning. Actually, to be fair, I did cut my hair, so <laughs> it was probably like that long, and I was getting a little weird about. It. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I'm going right after this podcast is done. Actually, we it's kind of a family trip to the barber shop. Well, I, I can tell you that the, the the number one word that keeps coming back up to my mind is orchestration. All right. And so uh, in previous conversations and episodes, Gary, we've talked about, you know, the orchestration between the CRM and the BSS and the OSS, which is a very back office centric approach. Right. That's right. And we haven't had as much network um, discussion, which is great. And I'm glad you're doing here that you're here. But but it really that orchestration um, and one of our contributors, Johnny Johnson, by the way, hello, Johnny, how are you doing? Um, has really kind of said, hey, look, it's not just about those core elements. It's about all the facets. It's about customer experience. It's about the network. It's about truck roll. It's about working across all of the facets. But what you've given us today is a better feel for, uh, and I've learned a lot, is that, you know, just, just smart pin technology and the applied use of smart pin technology to get better network edge intelligence and information about, you know, churn or all the different advantages we've talked about becomes another element of the orchestration. And and really, as I've sat here and listened, it's it's really a more important part of the orchestra than I really thought about before we really talked about it. You know, the thing I kind of skipped over, I should have probably mentioned earlier too, is the fact that historically, and even today, there there's customers out there that have pen and paper. They don't have any digitized in the field. The guys don't have a lot of tools. Historically, they might go out, 
Well, there's some customers that are so small. I mean, the, the engineer, the field operations guy has been working in this neighborhood for 30 years. Well, maybe they don't. He's got to know. But, but uh, no, look, I mean. Office knows what he's done. There's no way to collect data on a note. All right, so, on some so, so a quick business question on the sales side. I mean, if you're dealing with a, a network operator that might have 6,000 subscribers with a, with a footprint that is very small, maybe you don't need that level of automation. Maybe not. Maybe you don't, right? I mean, I mean, it really kind of gets down to what's the competitive scenario of that operator, right? And as soon as there's another competitor that comes in, whether it be satellite or you know some other technology, you know, then then they have to start thinking about that, right? right. But to me, when I listen to to what you guys do, um, you know, any kind of scale above ten thousand subscribers makes sense. Right, yeah, you know, and when you get up to a hundred thousand, then then the economies of scale start to kind of really make sense, and it kind of feeds into different information systems. I do have one question about. Um, we talked about data and now analytics, and we talked about different feeds coming in from this component of the orchestra, right, which is the network side. Right. One of the things we talked about before is data marts, right, on a functional level versus an enterprise Neo. data mart, right? And so one of the one of the challenges that th my experience as a non-practitioner is that the further you get away from that, that function, um, the more difficult it is to really drive good quality intelligence. So a data mart at the BSS-centric level view tends to have really good value. Or on the OSS side, it really has great value on the CRM side. But when you start mixing it all in, the level of challenge to be able to kind of drive economies across an enterprise data mart becomes more difficult. Well, it becomes difficult because of a couple of reasons. One is the views are different across those different business units. Functions, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that data is viewed differently. You have different privacy requirements for that. Good point. Which means being Good able point. to display that at a CRM terminal versus over at the network side, you may have certain things you don't want to show, positioning, locations, financial data, whatever the case may be. So the, that that uh, the orchestra, the orchestration of that data to provide to the ears at the CRM level a particular view of that information that meets all those goals and provides value is something you have to think about. So you have to have that access across each one of those particular functional units, determine which data fits in where, and, and do you need to tell them the, the uh, certain specific information about um, a pawn address or something here at this to the CRM? No. Uh, the fact that there's a zip code and they can pull it up on the map and says they're over here and show a heat map that says, hey, by the way, CR person, when you're looking at this, if it's got a lot of cautionary symbols on this right now, go ahead and hit the more detailed report that says this area is having some infrastructure issues, for example, or whatever the case may be. But that that uh, that challenge has always been there to get that enterprise view to multiple ears. And, and that's, that's been an issue for decades. Yeah, it was it, an issue. It, it you, when you were a sprint, it was probably the same problem, right? right? Everybody's really good at this area, but what we're trying to do with this orchestration, right? And you dealing with more and more requests for integration mm -hmm. to try to have better business intelligence yeah. across the entire footprint, not as easy as it seems. And every stakeholder kind of needs, and, and that's a bad statement, because whenever you say every stakeholder, you know nothing will ever get done. <laughs> but when you when you when you come to it, the the appropriate stakeholders of the, the the with the keys to the information in each one of these functional areas needs to be able to generate an associated view of information that that the other side of the equation, the other stakeholders would be able to utilize, mm -hmm. meeting privacy requirements and other items, timing. You don't want to send data. Out. Well, we only give the data out after it's three months old. Okay, well that's great, but it doesn't do us any good over here because these people have already left. Because right. uh, uh, you know the that, money that left with them. So yeah, timing, visibility, and the the viewpoint of of that functional unit, what they're trying to do, who are they servicing? Are they customer facing? Are they internal business unit facing? Are they infrastructure? 
And that's a universal issue, yes. whether it's whether it's telecom, insurance, financial services. That's that's a big challenge because but, you, you've got how many times have we gone to a customer that's had ninety six data marts, and there's not and, and eighty three reports about the same thing, and none of them have the same number. And you know what? You know, so theoretically, someone who's in charge of data strategy right. and connecting all the dots should be driving that bus, right? And most of the time, when you go upstream to the the mega players, right? The you know the top you know guys with you know ten million subscribers. They've got people driving that bus, right? right. But 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 for a lot of our uh, clients, customers, you know that are ten thousand to two million subscribers. That I don't I don't know if I really see that. I don't know if I really see a unified data, you know, orchestration intelligence function that's really kind of sitting on top of that. Have you? I'm just curious. Do you think you do you see that? I have. In your experience, pretty much no. Honestly, for me personally, if I was going to evaluate a technology of location intelligence, I'd look for flexibility, scalability. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this in this landscape. I, I see the the competitive landscape. The thing that I I, I see that lacks across the board is usually just the flexibility. The that comes like a framework to be to do what the customer needs, right? Because we don't go in and say, "Hey, here's a product," you know. It's, it's, no, it's, nothing is a one size fits all. Exactly. You guys are deploying. You're customizing it to each. It's very. To, it's very much a diagnostic, uh, a sell for us. I guess is the wrong way to say maybe. But we have to go in and understand the pain of the customer, and the pain's not going to be repeatable 100 percent to customer to customer. So having a highly configurable framework that can be kind of tailored to the needs of those different customers is hugely important. You know, so I mean, flexibility and just being able to create any digital process on a location with media, whatever choose, whatever they want to put in those containers. Yeah, the, the flexibility. You, you've got the you, you want the flexibility to put whatever a carrier wants to put into a container yeah. is critical. I think it's critical, right? I mean, the last thing you want to be as a customer is to say, "Hey, I want this feature," and they go, "Well, that's not really a thing we do," and all of a sudden you're kind of boxed and you know can't do things, right? So, mm -hmm. all right. What what other elements? So flexibility, uh, scalability, right? Yeah, yeah. Scale is obviously important. I mean, we we have some tier one customers, and obviously, you know, you have a lot of moving parts. And you got to keep it in real time. So performance and scale is always going to be critical to that. Um, so so here's my question: Is that there are there are you know smart bin technology has been around in the mobile world for quite some time. Maps have been around forever, right? right so so what's the difference between a mobile smart bin technology? says, I'm here, you know, pick me up, versus, you know, what I think you've started to kind of share with the flexibility and the information that you can kind of, you know, put into that smart pin. You know, what are the other things that an evaluator or somebody considering smart pin technology as a carrier really needs to think about? Honestly, what we want on is honestly is just industry expertise and being a partner. I mean, our guys really honestly know what they, they, we've. Everybody in our company is pretty much long-term telco people, right? So we understand the pain. We understand what they're trying to do. We understand where they're where they're where they're probably at. Yeah, we and where they want to go as part of this new frontier. Yeah, I mean, Ron's team; those guys are amazing. They they're so aware of the pain. They understand. They know how to speak their vernacular. They understand their problems. I mean, we don't have a, we're not process heavy. So one thing about, you know, people like us is we answer our phones. We don't put them through a freaking, you know, open a ticket. We have an SLA. We're very high touch. High touch. Customer. High yeah, touch. Exactly. Cus so what I'm hearing is, is that's, that's what that separates ourselves really is right. touch care. So, and, and again, if there's, you know, a lot of other, you know, tomorrow there's, there's 10 new market entrants into the smart pin technology yeah. world, right? Um, one size does not fit all. No, I don't think so at all. Right, because every carrier is different. Ab that, absolutely, you know that. It's like there's not one network fits all. It's just... Exactly. Uh, and so flexibility, scalability, the ability to configure and the ability... And, uh, uh, you know, it's it's not one of these things where you're just going to say, I'm going to buy the technology and I'm just going to plug it into my stack and flip the switch. It doesn't work like that. That's right. It, it right. does, and it's a very configurable. There's no easy button here. It's if if you want all of the good. I'm working on the easy button. It's not here. <laughs> it's on the roadmap. All right. Yeah, cool. All right. So, so that was one element that I want to talk about, and then you were just talking about another one. 
I was kind of getting back to the a little bit more of an extension of what you were talking about with the containering and the flexibility of that. So you're able to attach whatever sort of digital media objects, information, history, tracking. Some of that history goes back to our conversation about integration across your enterprise. So if you know how many times have as this customer called in, that may not normally be generic information that goes out to the guy in the truck. Uh, you know, they've just got a work order, for example, traditionally. Right. Now you've got, I, I pull this up and I go, oh my gosh, I can see this person. They're, you know, they are a high touch customer. Right. They call in. We're usually out here at least. And Frida, and Frida Weiner. I, I don't like you picking on my Aunt Frida, though. So gotcha. keep going. You know, All right, sorry about True. So when you come back and, and you've built now the digital container allows you to, I guess, attach whatever you kind of want to based on your implementation, your flexibility. You can say, hey, we're going to have uh, on the on the construction side, we're going to take some videos of this. We're going to have that in there. We're going to have uh, specific information that is just very detailed in its nature. Can you do something like that? Can you put a video file oh, attached yeah, to it? Really, yeah. To yeah, yeah we, we put pictures. Oh, we, that's pretty cool. Pretty much all of our smart pens. I mean, they're always taking pictures of the assets. I mean, condition. Think about like a squirrel digging up a freaking fiber cable, tearing it up. They're like, well, the reason you really went down is bam, picture. Yeah. I mean, See the squirrel at 2 a.m.? Look at your package is getting delivered to your house. They snap a picture on their phone and it comes and shoots right back to you. Same kind of thought process there is, you know, the squirrel ate it, and Frida's there's her trowel right here in their backhoe, yep. uh, and she was out using the John Deere again and, and whacked they, up. They, the, they call the plants, you know, the plants in the backyard. They pull up the case, they look inside, they take pictures, so they can. Yeah. Before the guy goes out, he can see what he's dealing with, how it's wired. Saves him time. Do I need tools? Am I out of capacity? Is there any more room left? Visualizations are huge. And it, and, it, and it travels as a history with that. So you get into the... Exactly. You can see the notion you know, of those. Two, every year we come back and there's always a wasp net right in the DMARC box on the side <laughs> of the house. And they keep coming back, you know, and, and every one of them. So, you know, if you're allergic to wasps, don't go on that. Um, don't go visit that house because I know that because we have yellow jackets keep showing up in our box outside and it's really irritating. Anyway, but yeah, that, that's a that's a the next step of information. And then that integration piece you were talking about earlier. How do you get that CRM data back over and vice versa, the more detailed information back over to the CRM side from the more detailed networking side? And how much of that's really usable? I get part of that is uh, still to be determined. What is what is that view that winds up being at the CRM level that lets me win, keep the customer, provide a great experience, and be proactive with, with that service? So it's it's a combination of how the neighborhood's working and what's going on and all the all that other digital uh, capital that you've captured from your side of the equation and then presenting it in a usable manner to a non-technical practitioner on the CRM side. Do you see anything else near term other than some of that integration pieces or is there anything uh, on that front line of information you, that you see expanding rapidly in your containers? Actually, let me flip the script a little bit because the thing that I keep thinking about is you guys live in the BSS. We're way out on the edge in the field outside the homes, right? That last mile. We have a ton of information. You guys have a ton of information. Or do you got, when you hear me talk about this for what, 45 minutes to an hour, what do you hear me talk about that actually is relevant to what you guys do? And how do you need, what information would you use to make your product better? Well, I would, I would go to the heat map information available on the customer support side. So that they're able to see when a customer calls in that that dashboard that that status of that area, danger danger zone that information. Danger. So I want a red green yellow light yeah. instantly available to me that's real time yeah. for for the for the service technician or the customer service representative. Uh, and before that even happens, I want to be pinging out and and being proactive. You're rolling the truck. You're taking a look at this uh-huh. because. Hey, we know this is, you know, we've got a core element here that's yellow. For whatever reason, let's, we, we need to be after on that. So I'll, I'll take it one step yeah. further. I'll take it one step further. So if I sit there and I look at a problem or a heat map, right, that comes in from these digital pens, and I look at a space that's you know, historically yellow or red and problematic, right, I'm, I'm going to have a little more kind of, uh, I'm going to work with my product and my marketing team to say it, hey, we need to kind of come up with a product or a bundle or service that reflects the conditions of that environment or that specific customer, right, whether they're residential or commercial. 
right? I've got a better understanding of how I need to approach that customer from a sales or from a product or from an offering perspective. And by the way, that also is, you know, that works both ways. If I've got something that's totally green and happy and goodness and sunshine, you know, then, then I want to try to leverage that and I want to kind of, you know, sell, upsell them on additional ARPU offerings that, yeah. uh, to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. So it, that, that visibility into, you know, the challenges that are, you know, exposed from that information, that network edge, deeper dive information that could include everything from, you know, it, and if I'm a CSR or if I'm a salesperson or if I'm a marketing person, and if I'm having a conversation, and probably more commercial conversation than an individual consumer, but if I can sit there and look at that log, and if I can look at all of the visual container information about that that connection or that commercial or that, that customer, that really helps me figure out what I want to go sell and how I want to sell. So doesn't that just... You look at brand size to basically drive revenue, yeah. which makes sense, right? Yeah. Then, yeah. That dovetails straight into that whole 4,000 pound gorilla AI question that, that you're able to leverage some of the new analytic technology and capabilities of the AI environments yeah. to help you get a lot of these views that we were just talking about. To recommend those proposals that I was discussing instead of, instead of asking somebody who's, who's got XYZ salary and XYZ that would take them you know, two days of studying, whatever, to go after a complex commercial account, an AI tool can automate all that and say, here's some recommendations based on all this data and how we marry it all together on what you should be recommending. And the beauty of that is that it's supposed to get smarter over time. The more you use it, the better it gets. Right, you try. So, so it, you know, in some of the traditional reporting uh, methods, when you had automatic reports, they automatically come out, but they'll automatically produce errors for you if the data is not right and nobody's looking at. It. There's not a predictive, uh, analytic engine behind that that you get, you know, at the AI level that we're seeing today. That that is a new way of presenting this information. So I see that as a natural extension from what we were talking about before of getting that enterprise. And I, and I see that as a tool. It's not a foolproof 100% oh, tool. Right, it, but it's something that can kind of provide a jump start or get you halfway there, or sixty, or seventy, or eighty percent there. But you still have to apply that, you know, human element in order to kind of interpret all of that great AI data that's aggregating different multiple disparate sources of data, and then kind of still applying the human element. But it automates the process and accelerates faster R. So if you're if you're able to take let's say a twenty variable scenario of things that are happening in in your shop, both at the network at the edge level, shop being a telco, your telco, your, your 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 installation, and you can take twenty or thirty variables that are rather complex in nature, and you've processed them a number of different times to come up and say now when my CSR gets a call from somebody in this area, we know. 12 other things that are taking place on our system. We've got three things here. Our marketing department is pulling this out. Uh, the weather is doing this over here. So all those different things can come up to give that real-time presentation at a much higher level of, of presentation to that customer. So you have a more proactive mm -hmm. engagement with that customer, right. for example. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be happier. You're going to do a better job. The same thing with the predictive pieces that says you don't even talk to the customer. You know this whole area is having an issue. Yeah. Uh, or what's our well, this whole area is fantastic. Let's get leverage. Our marketing team says this whole area is fantastic. What if we started to integrate and sell some things that were community driven, for example? Correct. I don't know well, where do we get that data. Well, we'll pull that in. Let's. So I, I see that as another huge benefit of the technology. That but it's but it's an it's another one of those marriages between. The, that good, rich digital data capture, and then how do you process that to some sort of other level of usability? And it may you need to pull in more things. It's not just not just the edge data. It's not just the CRM data. Right. It's not just the products. It's not. It's all of these things. It's a multi-variable scenario that the AI seems to be uh, a, a great. At a, at a minimum, it's a 
contributing tool and, and an enhancer and an accelerator. Yes. With, at a minimum. Yeah. And that, and you can, you can make Aunt Frida happy with that. There we go. All right. So let's talk about Aunt Frida. So, um, is there anything else aside from Aunt Frida that you would like to talk about? Aunt Frida is hard to beat, but let me think about it. Uh, I'm just kind of curious about kind of where we do things and where you guys have gaps and where there's, I just, I'm just curious because I, I live so far away from where the OSS or the BSS at this point, I should say, I'm just. That's so weird knowing your past, man. I don't. And you're in a different space. You're in a different space. I'm more in a new hat. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, I don't have any other real questions for you about that stuff right now. Honestly, I, I, I need to spend some time and think about it. Let's think about it over a beer, maybe at this at a pub after this. So I thought that I was coming here for beer. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, let me do this. Is that um, I, I just want to say thank you, Gary. Yeah, you've you've given me a great education on digital pin technology. I was. I, I really, uh, I really thought it was just kind of, you know, hey, take a picture and gives them some information. So you've expanded it. So thank you for coming again. So if somebody, if somebody wants to know more about digital pin technology, where, tell me a little bit about the, your company and where should they should go. Uh, the company basically, uh, the best thing to do is probably go to nervy dot com. You know, there's all nervy not nearby. Nervy, nervy not nearby. Yeah. Nervy n dot com. I mean, it's. You got a long list of reference customers on there. You can see on the comp of the website. I think Comcast, Wide Open West, are a big. You know, there's a lot of you know big cable companies on there that use the product. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, you can go and contact us through that. I mean, we're not hard to get hold of. We yeah, obviously we want to grow, so it's it's not hard. People are smart enough to connect. As I was say, if they want to find us, they'll find us. They're finding us now, right? We have, we have a problem with finding customers. They're finding us already. That's not what? the problem. You son of a gun. <laughs> you son of a gun. All right. So anyway, hey, man, Brian, what else you got, brother? Hey, I think we've covered a lot of good stuff here. Thanks again, Gary, for coming on in. It's good to see you again. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's great. Yakking and checking. And uh, I, I think we covered a lot of good stuff today. On another episode of Revenue Uncoded. Coded. 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 Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Take care. Bye.